welcome to True Hebrews United of the Lord, Yeshua. This is your beloved holiness instructed by the getting in the book. I want to salute all the people out there living clean and separate unto the Lord. All you hypocrites out there, shut your church down. You're false. Get out of here. So anyways, I want to uh, definitely thank the Lord for all the people across the whole world that's really honest. People that's trying to get into the body of Yeshua HaMashiach that's making their steps, repenting for sin. Hey, you're not far from the kingdom. Make those steps. And then once you're ready to fully commit, get baptized in that water for the remissions of sins. That way you can receive the gift, which is the Ruach HaKadish, the spirit of separation, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And uh, endure to the end, and the same shall be saved. It says, those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. With all that being said, I want to give one more shout out. This is so for some people, some women out there. Hey. Turn to Acts. We're going to deal with Acts. I'm going to deal with you guys real quick, then we're going to get into the real topic. Acts. All the women out there and the men out there that have people that is unbelieving, I want to give some words of advice because I know it's for, for someone particularly out there, for two, two people particularly out there, but I know it's for people across the world. Acts chapter 2. We're going to hit on verse 39. It says, For the promises unto you and unto your children, and to all the, uh, that are afar off, even as many as the Lord that God shall call. And with many other words did he testify, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves. If you have a husband that's not lining up, if he's in truth, but he's a slugger, he's lazy and does not want to do the work of the Lord, or does not want to serve the Lord wholeheartedly, you have to save yourself. You can't just obey him and be obeying disobedience towards the Almighty. He does not have that authority over you to get you to go against the Word of God. Save yourselves. When it's all said and done, you can do nothing but save yourselves. So go to, let's go to uh, all you men out there too. I want to give some word of advice too. Go to uh, Hebrew, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Corinthians 7, yep. 1243. We're going to start at verse 10. It says, And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from the husband, but in if she depart, let her remain unmarried, and let not the husband uh, put away his wife. Verse 12, But the rest of this, uh, speak, I not the Lord. If any brother have a wife, that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. The unbelieving which have a husband that believeth, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. That for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they're holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God called you to peace. For you men that's in the home, if you're saying you're living for the Lord and you're saying she's pleased to dwell with you, then she, you have to hold a standard being ahead. She cannot bring no false idolatry stuff up in the house. She should not be playing certain music. She should not be watching certain things. That, that is your home. You're the head of the home. You need to hold a standard. If she's uh, pleased to dwell with you and not cook pork for you or your kids or not... Uh, Trying to get the kids to break the Sabbath or not. If she's she may be an unbeliever, but she respects the whatever guidelines you set in your home for standards of holiness, then you stand. You, if, why do you think the Bible says, but if the unbelieving depart, why would they depart if you let her smoke cigarettes and, and celebrate Christmas and let her be cussing and let her watch these rated R movies and let her what she'll never depart. But the reason why an unbelieving would depart is because you're holding a standard in the home. This is why he said this. If they depart, they're not pleased to dwell with you. Why are they not pleased to dwell with you? Because you're holding a standard. But for you, man, you guys aren't holding a standard in your home. I've seen so many people name the name of Christ, and then they have wives in their home. I think, praise the Lord for you, man, bro, because you've been, you've been standing for years, man. I praise the Lord for you. I see they won't hold a standard in their home, and they'll let their wife bring in sin in the home. And he's the head. He's the head. Why, why would it say, but if the unbelieving depart? She'll never depart if you let her do what she wanted in the home because you're not holding a standard. She, you're not holding a standard. You never. She, why would she depart? It's just like you're an unbeliever because you let her do whatever she wants in the home. You may can't force her not to wear pants. Hey, when we go anywhere out in public, you need to wear pants. Hey, you can't be, you can't be washing that stuff. Not when I hold. You may sneak and do it, 
But hey, when I'm we're not watching that stuff. Hey, we're not bringing that stuff in the house. That's idolatry. No, don't cook me or the kids. You need to hold a stand. You need to hold a stand. It's gonna be friction. But if she's pleased to do all with you, she may say, "Hey, I don't believe in the Bible, but I, I won't cook pork for you. I don't believe in the Bible, but you know what? All right, you know I won't do this. I won't do this." And if she's pleased, she's still an unbeliever, but she respects the standards you hold. It says, "Don't put her away. Keep her. Keep her." But if you're not going to hold any standard, you're just going to let her do what she wants, man, it, 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 it's compromising. Because when I pray, I'm praying that the Lord's presence can be here. So how can I say that if I let my wife bring in sin in the camp? Nick, show me in the Bible where they brought sin in the camp and they were blessed to the Lord. That never happened. That never happened. I want my house, even though it, it, it even though uh, when we're not having service or anything, whatever house you live at, your house should be a house of prayer. Or you should be seeking the Lord. You should have a prayer closet. God's not coming to your house when you let letting sin in the camp. Right. Don't compromise. This is why it says if the unbelieving apart, that's because you're holding a standard. You're holding a standard. But that said, being done, let's get into the real topic. I just got to that's for somebody. That's for somebody that was on my heart the other day. That's for somebody because there's people out there. I've seen multiple men. They're, they're trying to serve the Lord, but they let their wife do things they are not. Oh, yeah, for you women out there that's married, I know it's hard. Because you have a head, and your head is just happened to be a sinner. He's an unbeliever. What you can do and take a stance is saying, "Hey, I can't cook pork for you. If you, you're, this is your home. Hey, I gotta respect you. You're my head, but I'm not gonna sin against the Lord. You know what I'm saying? If you wanna bring that stuff in the house, you're the head, but I'm not gonna participate. You still stand. You don't have as much authority as the husband, but you can still take your stance where you could make sure your bodily person." Is not sinning against the Lord. No, I'm not going to cook you that because I, I I don't eat pork. This is be not partaking another man's sin. I can't cook you that. I, hey, I could cook you some beef. I could cook you this and this and this or salad or whatnot. You know, I got you. I could cook you some stuff like that, but I can't cook you um, that because I serve the Lord. And I know it's a little harder when you have a husband that's an unbeliever versus a man that has more accountability because he's the head and he's made in the image of God. And as a woman, you have a head, but you've got to still stand. You gotta still stand. And if he's pleased to be with you, then he's gonna respect that you're not gonna participate in his sin. You may can't tell him not to bring no false Christmas stuff in the house because he's your head, but you can say, I'm not participating, I'm not decorating, I'm not taking it down, I'm not coming to dinner, I'm not participating in any of them. If you're a man, you should be holding standards in the home. There's no excuse excuse for you. You don't have a head. Your head supposedly be Christ, but hey, you're letting your woman be your head because you're letting her bring sin in the camp. How is it that you name the name of Christ, right? And Satan has more dominion in your house. You're, you're a husband and you're the head over the woman. And Satan has more dominion in your house because you're letting the woman bring Satan in the home. And you're saying you're serving the Lord. How is that possible? You're, I'm the head, but I let my wife bring all this stuff in the home. And I want my house to be blessed of the Lord. That don't even make no sense. we got to hold a stand. Satan has, I'm the head and I'm serving the Lord, but Satan has more dominion in my house. Yeah, let's see how that works in the Day of Judgment. Anyways, with all that being said, let's get into the main topic. Let's go to Genesis. What is the Sabbath? I want to deal with what is the Sabbath. Because uh, we, we talk about the Sabbath, and I, I tell people about keeping the Sabbath, but I haven't taken the time to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1. I haven't took the time to actually teach what is the Sabbath, and what does it mean? What does the Sabbath mean? And I do want to apologize to you, Brother Vince, because uh, for years I've talked about the Sabbath, but I haven't did a detailed teaching on the Sabbath. Like, in detail, I teach how the Sabbath still stands, but I haven't taught how to keep the Sabbath. We're going to be dealing with a three-part Bible study. Um, your Bible may be different than mine. It's three parts. We're going to deal with what is the Sabbath? Then we're going to deal with all the excuses they use to fight against it and why it still stands. And then we're going to be dealing with how to keep the Sabbath. So stay tuned these next three Sabbaths coming up. I probably won't be teaching on Pentecost. I'll finish it after Pentecost. Maybe I'll teach you Sabbath night right before Pentecost. Genesis chapter 1. You guys found that fast? How did you guys find that fast? Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 15. You guys ready? All right, we're going to start at 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day 
from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. And so, and, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So I'm going to let you know, first of all, he says, I'm going to make lights and they're going to be for our years, for our days and for our signs and for our seasons. This is, this is how we establish time. Not the false Gregorian time. The Lord gave us the sun and the moon. We're going to continue to read this. And that time still stands to this day. Let's keep going. And God made two great lights. What two great lights was that? Uh, the lights. The greater light to rule the day. We know what that is. And the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. All right. So I wanna, I'm going to skip over now. We're going to go to verse 26. No, I'll read to 19. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And one to rule over the day and uh, and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good in the evening and the morning was the fourth day. So let's go to 26. So I want to deal with, he made these lights for our times, for our seasons, for our days, and for our years. Now let's go to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Check this out. Over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that, is, that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him, male and female. So let's go down to, uh, I'll read through 31. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, uh, and multiply, and replenish, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now let's go to chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. So we're dealing with the seven days. I'm just skipping to these. I'm hitting these three points. One is the lights he made. Two is when he made man and gave us dominion over the animals. And then now we're going to go with, uh, to chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And the seventh day God ended his work he had made, and he rested on the Sabbath day from all his work which he made. And what did he do? And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And that means to set apart, sanctified, because in that in it he rested from all his work which God created and made. So he sanctified it and he separated it. Out of the whole Bible, the Sabbath is the only day that has a name. If you read the whole Bible, no other days. It's first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. They don't have names. The Gregorian calendar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all that foolishness. But our days... 1 through 6, Sabbath. That's the only day that has an actual name because he separated that from all the other days. So let's let's keep going. Exodus chapter 31. And we're going to see some parallels how stuff still stands. We ain't going to be able to finish it all today, not only because time is running short, but uh, because, uh, because this is a nice Bible study and we're going to exhaust it. By the time that we're done... What's happening? Exodus 31. By the time, 104. 104. By the time we're done, you guys will be scholars in the Sabbath. Chapter 31, I'm going to start at verse 13. You ready? Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Just like he separated the Sabbath, that I separated to you. And I want to keep, the key point is, this is a sign between me and you. So it's not just I'm telling you to do something. This is a sign between me and your covenant. This is a sign. I'm going to get into this sign. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiled it, it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever do any work on the Sabbath, that show shall be cut off from his people. Six days may work be done, but the Sabbath, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy unto the Lord. Whoever so doeth any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So, verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Now, when you look up the definition of perpetual, it says eternity, it says eternal, it says without end. Perpetual covenant. We'll read all the feast days. It says you shall keep these feast days forever. But one thing I want to keep on is it is a sign between me and you. Because we're going to look at other signs and we're going to break these scriptures down. So let's go with, this is, this is a sign between the covenant I have with me and you. 
Let's see what other covenants, and let's see if they're done away with too. Because all they say, oh, that was the law, that was the law, that's done away with. I want to hit on the sun and the moon. He made man to have dominion over the animals, and he gave us the Sabbath. This is before the law. This is in creation. Let's see if any of this, let's see other covenants too. Let's go to Exodus, uh, Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 8. And, and this is after Noah, the Lord destroyed the whole earth by water. Noah came, flooded 40 days, 40 nights, and they were on the, that ship for like eight months or something like that. And, he, and they came down. This is what the Lord said to Noah. And God spake unto Noah the sons uh, and, and to his sons with him, saying, Behold, I establish a covenant with you. So once again, in the old covenant, he makes a covenant with them. He gives them Sabbath as a sign. I establish a covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the fowl, uh, uh, um, the fowl of the cattle, of every beast of the earth with you, for all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Let's keep going. So he makes a covenant. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall uh, all flesh be cut off any more, uh, by water of the flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God says, this is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is for a perpetual, uh, that, that, that is with you for a perpetual generation. So what is this token? Because we're going to look up token, and then we're going to look up what the definition of sign when we get back to Exodus. I do set a bow in the cloud, and it shall be a token of of a covenant between me and you. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And I will set a bow and it shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So, once again, he says, this is a perpetual covenant without end. So who here, have anyone seen a rainbow this year or last year? You can, so, so, so he says a bow and it's a rainbow, right? And he says it's a perpetual covenant. So why isn't this covenant done away with? We still see rainbows, right? So this means he's not going to destroy the, water by, uh, the, uh, the earth by water, right? It says he's going to destroy it by fire. So this covenant still stands, right? It, it says it's a perpetual covenant. So this is why we still see a bow. But there's more covenants that still stand. Let's get deeper into the book. And then we're going to get back to the Sabbath covenant. Let's get big. But the key thing is a token. So you, when you look up a token, it means a monument. Let's look up token. Monument or a beacon or evidence. This is evidence that I will not destroy the earth by water. This is my token when you look at that. So let's look up another covenant that is a perpetual covenant. Let's see if it stops. Because all these covenants say perpetual, and let's see if they still stand. So let's keep going. Perpetual means without end. Let's keep going. Give me, let's go back to Exodus. No, let's, yeah, let's go back to Exodus 31. Because if they say the law is done away with, then we should see no more rainbows, right? That happened before, right? We should see no more rainbows, right? Because he said, I set a bow in the earth for a perpetual covenant. The law is done away with. We should see no rainbows. These hypocrites, they, why do we still have a sun and a moon? He made the Sabbath day before the Moses law. So you're saying that's the law, but this the Sabbath was before the law. The rainbow was before the law. We still have a rainbow. Amen. The sun and the moon for days, signs, and years. Why do we still have a sun and a moon if all this stuff don't make it? I, you're a hypocrite if you have a dog, a cat, or any animal in your house and saying the law is done away with and not keeping the Sabbath. Because and when he made man, he gave us dominion over all these animals. But if it's done away with, what you doing with your cat, hypocrite? What you doing with your dog? Because you know it's not done. How are you going to do away with creation? He makes the sun and the moon. He makes the Sabbath. And he gave man dominion over all animals. You have a cat or a dog, and yet you're saying you don't have to keep the Sabbath, it's done away with. Then you, you a sinner right there. Why, then why do you still have an animal? Then us having dominion, we just read, we have dominion over all these fishes and cattle, right? That He, he gave us that dominion before the law. Why isn't that part done away with? They, they, they want to do away with what is not pleasing to their flesh. Amen. That's what Amen. it is. 
So let's keep going. Genesis. So we read, we read what a token was. It was a monument or a beacon or evidence of this covenant I have with you, Noah. Let's go back to Genesis 31. We're going to go with uh, 13 again. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that do sanctify you. So now we go back to Genesis. He says, and with Noah, he gave him a token. And what was the definition of a token? Was evidence, a beacon, or a monument. So when you look at the definition of a sign, guess what it is? Monument, beacon, or evidence. It's the same definition. Same definition. So the Sabbath of being in the New or the Old Covenant is a token between us and the Almighty. So how can you do away with this? So let's keep going. See, let's say if the Lord comes back here tomorrow, day, Sabbath day, and He says, you know what? I'm destroying everyone who's not keeping my Sabbath. Now who will make it? The people that keep, that has that token, the people that keeps His sign, the people, it's, it's like this. Have you ever been in high school and you give this, you like this girl, and you give this girl this necklace, and it has a half a heart, and you have the half of the heart, and you say, hey, you know, as long as we have this, you know what I'm saying, I'll always be there for you. And she'll be like, oh, thank you. If she did that, how would you feel? So how does it feel when you break the Sabbath? How does it feel when he gave, I gave you this Sabbath as a token between me and you, that I sanctify you. And here you're going to come and break the Sabbath? That's how, that's how, that's how you do God? That, that's like saying, you know what, let's get rid of the rainbow. You know what I'm saying? This is a token. He gave this as a token, saying, oh, you're in my covenant. That's what it is. People just think, oh, we just need to keep the Sabbath. No. He gave us the Sabbath. You know, just like I rested, man, here's the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I destroy the, you know what, Noah? I'm not going to destroy the whole world. Here's a bow. And this is a sign between me and you and all the animals. An evidence that I will never destroy it. You know what? I'm going to save you. Here's my Sabbath. Here's my Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. Let's get into some more covenants that's not done away with. Let's go to uh, Genesis 17. We're going to start at verse 7. Everyone there? Yeah. yeah. Verse 7. <laughs> and I will establish my covenant, uh-oh, between me and thee, and their seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Uh-oh, we heard that before, right? With Noah and with the Sabbath and uh, later on. To be a God unto thee and thy seed shall uh, after thee. I will give unto thee thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art stranger in the land of the Canaan, for an everlasting possession, I will be their God. And God said unto the, uh, Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, and thy seed after their generation. This is my covenant which they shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after you. Every man child shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. So the promise was Noah. You're in, I'm not going to destroy the world by water anymore. I'm going to give you the bow as a token. So then he comes to Abraham and he says, Abraham, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to give you this land and I'm going to always be with your seed that come after you. And I'm going to give you circumcision as a token. So then we get into the, the Sabbath and we get the people in the New and the Old Covenant and say, hey, I'm going to give you the Sabbath as a token, as evidence that I will save you. Do you understand? Do you see the parallel with covenants and everlasting covenant? Mm -hmm. This one said everlasting, the others two said perpetual, and perpetual means eternal without end. So let's so let's keep going. Where are we at? Okay. <laughs> verse uh verse ten. This is my covenant. Okay, we read that. Verse eleven. And you shall circumcise uh, verse twelve. Oh. That is the eighth day old shall be circumcised among a man child in your generation. He that is born in the house and brought with money, or any stranger that is which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with money must needs to be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. We'll read 14. And the uncircumcised 
child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He have broken my covenant. I gave you a token and you threw it out. I gave you this heart, this necklace, or I gave you this, whatever this stuff. When you're a little kid, you know, they get that little necklace. Mm -hmm. Women shouldn't be wearing jewelry anyways. But I gave you this and you just tossed it out. Man, you broke my covenant. I gave you this as a token between me and you and you just toss it out. Really? That's what you do? So, this is an everlasting covenant. And when you, circumcision is never done away with because we see in the new covenant, I'm not talking about circumcision right now, but in the new covenant it says you need to have the circumcision of the heart. So now that circumcision never stopped. And this is before the law. Circumcision never stopped. Circumcision went into the law and went into the new covenant, New Testament. So now you need the circumcision of the heart. We still have the rainbow. Why is that? Why isn't the rainbow done away with? You're going to do away with the Sabbath, which is seven days. All this is in creation before the law. The Sabbath was here. So is having dominion over animals. So is the sun and the moon. All these are different things that he made in seven days. How are you going to do away with creation with the Sabbath, but still you have pets in your house? And we still have a sun and the moon. Why isn't the sun and the moon done away with, stupid? Exactly, because you're a hypocrite. You just don't want to keep the Sabbath. So let's keep going. Let's go to Leviticus 23. They want to do away with everything. Why won't they do away with it? What's that shiny thing in the air? I don't know. The law is done away with. I don't know what that shiny thing in the air is. 148. Leviticus 23. How much time we got? We're going to run late tonight. 26 minutes. Sorry, brother and sister. What was it again? Yeah. 23. 23. It's going to be long with it. We're almost done, but we're going to go back, look back a little bit past 11 today. Leviticus 23. We're going to read verse 1. Start at verse 1. I'm not moving too fast for you guys, man. Right? No. Are you good? Yeah. Am I making it pretty clear? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I like showing these parallels so we we see throughout the scriptures how it still stands, how it still carry over. When he says that everlasting, when he says perpetual, hey, perpetual means that if when we see parts where it says forever, when it says the feast days last forever, how are you gonna say, well that forever stops? So then hell's not forever. So well, now you're gonna dictate which forever means forever now? Like they don't even make sense. Let's read this. I'll prove this. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit fast because I'm going to go a little bit fast. This is a long chapter. So uh, Leviticus 23. And if I read too fast, just let me know. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation, meaning a convocation means assembly. So we assemble just like we're here Sabbath night. It's not only not working, you need to assemble with the brethren. It's a holy assembly. Look up convocation if you don't believe me. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. That's one of the feasts. Um, these are the feasts of the Lord. Even a holy convocation should proclaim in a season. On the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. That's the second one we got. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Bam. That's the second, third one we got of the Lord. Seven days thou must, uh, you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day shall be a holy convocation. The first day is the Sabbath. You shall do no silver work. But um, you shall offer an offering uh, made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And, and in the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no silver work. So when it's a holy convocation, it's the Sabbath. Whether it falls on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, whatever day that day uh, the uh, high Sabbath falls on, it's the Sabbath. No work. Uh, and the Lord spake unto, uh, uh, to Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and say, when you be brought into the land and have uh, give up, uh, give unto you, and you shall reap the harvest, you shall uh, bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and you shall wave it, the sheaf before the Lord, to be acceptable for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. You shall offer that day when you have weighed the sheep, a lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering shall be two tenth deals of flour mingled with oil, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering, therefore, it shall be of wine and the fourth part of hen. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that you brought an offering unto the Lord. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings, wherever you dwell at. It's a statue forever. So don't try to say, oh, it's done away with when it says forever. Let's keep going. 
and this that's the feast of first fruits. And and, and you shall uh, count the uh, you from tomorrow after the sa uh, Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep offering a wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even on the morrow you shall offer, and seven Sabbaths shall be a number. Fifty days you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. That will be the feast of uh, Pentecost. That's what, what we're coming up right now. You shall bring uh, out of your habitation two two wave loaves of uh, uh, two tenth deals. Uh, you shall be fine flour. You shall be uh, it shall they shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits of the Lord. So that's the fourth holy day. We got the Sabbath. We got Passover, feast of unleavened bread. And now we got Pentecost, our uh, feast of first fruits. Uh, verse 19, they shall be a sacrifice of the kid of goats for a sin offering, two lambs for the first year of the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall wave them uh, with the bread of the first fruits of the wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs, they shall be holy unto the Lord and the priest. You shall proclaim the Sabbath of day. It may be a holy convocation unto you. That's why it's the Sabbath for us coming up this 30th. You shall do no silver at work therein. It shall be a statue forever in your dwellings throughout your generations. How many times you got to say forever and they keep doing away with it? But they sure enough will keep Christmas and Thanksgiving. When's your Christmas done away with, hypocrite? When's your Thanksgiving and Valentine's? Why, why is your, thanks, your Valentine's Day ever done away with? Why is all the law done away with? When's your Valentine's Day going to be? It's never going to be done away with because you get chocolates and you get the piece of flesh, sinner. 30 minutes? Okay, cool. So, um, verse 22. Are we at 22? Yep. Yeah. And when you shall reap the harvest of your land, you shall not make a glean riddance of the corners of the field with the reapers, neither shall you gather the glean of the harvest, and I shall leave it unto the poor and unto the stranger. I am the Lord your God. See, we've been at wick and welfare. When you farmed your land, you didn't take everything and stripped all the corn off of it. You left a little bit for the poor and the strength. Yeah, we're poor. We've been at wick. We've been at EBT and all that <laughs> stuff. We already, right. they ain't doing nothing new. They're just trying to mimic the people of God. And the Lord spake unto Moses. See, our laws were righteous, man. Still are. Verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying unto them, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall be have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, a holy convocation. So there's our fifth one. There's our fifth uh, feast day we got. Holy convocation. You shall do no silver work therein, but you shall offer an offer made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses. In the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a Day of Atonement, it shall be a holy convocation. There's our sixth one. You shall afflict your souls, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord. You shall do no work therein the self seven day, for the day is it, for it is the day of atonement, and make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whosoever shall be uh, shall not be afflicted, usually you fast. And uh, the self seven day you shall be cut off from among your people. Whatever soul that doeth any work the same day, that soul shall be destroyed. <laughs> Will I destroy from among his people? You shall do no matter what work therein is a statue for how long? Forever. Throughout your generations and all your dwellings. How many times you got to say it and we still do away with it? It's weird. And it shall be unto you a Sabbath rest. You shall afflict your souls and in the ninth day of the month uh, from even into evening you shall celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, we're going to hit one more in the 15th. Uh, a children of Israel, saying, In the fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacle or feast of ingathering. It calls it both in the Bible. And on the first day shall uh, be a holy convocation, you shall know no silver work. Seven days shall you offer an offer made by fire unto the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall offer an offer made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. Obviously, it's a Sabbath, so it's a solemn assembly. Holy convocation means assembly. And you shall do no silver work therein. So that's the seventh, uh, seventh feast we have. So my main point, I was a little long-winded, is how long did it say it was for? Para forever. siempre. Forever. How you say it? Para siempre. Para siempre. Para siempre. Yeah. That makes it sound good. Forever. That sounds like <laughs> some food or something. Hey, can I get some of that para siempre? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we see that it's forever, just like that covenant with the Sabbath is forever, just like the covenant he made with Abraham with circumcision, now it's having the circumcision of the heart, which is forever, just like the bow we see, which is forever. You see how these covenants, they say it's perpetual, everlasting, they're forever. So how can you do away with this stuff? Who gives us the power when he says forever? Well, you're forever don't mean forever. You're forever just mean because I don't want to keep it. That's what, that's what it means. I mean, I don't how many times does it have to say forever before they, it clicks? Man, these things last a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, I thank the Lord because 
I'm, I'm, I'm just dumb enough to obey the book. And I'm just smart enough to come to the book. These people that go to these theologian schools or whatnot, they outthink the Bible and they go into disobedience. Right, oh, I went right. to theologian and I went to all oh, this and this and I went to all this school. Hey, I just obey for what is written. Amen. Hey, bam, it says forever. I'm keeping it. Praise Amen. the Lord. I move on. I don't need to outthink God. That's right. Sometimes they get so smart to their own destruction. Come on. It's simple. It says they take out the simplicity that be in Christ. Come and on. this is basic. Am I using any scripture when we're dealing with covenants and perpetual? Look at the we'll get the coordinates and look up perpetual. We'll look at the look up sign and look up token and they have the same definition. It says evidence of uh, uh, evidence of my covenant. So let's keep going. Now we're going to deal with, I won't be able to hit on it all. We're going to deal with the main scriptures they use to fight against the Sabbath. We're going to hit them all. I can't hit them all tonight. We're going to deal with them all. All your, We're going to deal with the Colossians. Go to Colossians chapter 2. This is their main one. We're going to break that whole chip, chapter down and just crush them with their own words. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. You guys getting in pretty good? Everyone was good? Yeah, I'm not moving too fast. This stuff. I'm not ready too fast, but I just want to keep key on the points that I said forever. This is forever. And later on, maybe day three, I'll have what was that what was again, bro? Colossians chapter two. Twelve forty eight. And then uh God love you. Colossians C O L E like T T G C O L O. Because he was like, I'll be all this man. Colossians chapter 2, we're going we're gonna to hit 16 and 17. Let's hit 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or respect or a holy days or the new moon or the Sabbath, which is a shadow of things to come but the bodies of Christ. But see, it says let no man judge you. Let all you got, you got the holiness instructor. Let no man judge you in meat or drinks. First of all, judge means to condemn. But I'm going to deal with this last. We're going to break the whole chapter down. And I'll show you how he's dealing with the tradition of man. We're going to break this whole chapter down. Let's see what he's talking about. Let no man judge you. Because they, they, this is the first scripture they run to to say we don't have to keep the Sabbath. Don't let no man judge you and meet or drink or respect or our holy days. Let's keep going. So let's go to Colossians chapter 1. I mean Colossians uh, verse 1. Same chapter. Verse 1. We're going to break this whole chapter down, and I'm going to crush that whole thing you got. Don't let no man judge you when meet and drink in respect of the holy days. All right, verse 1, chapter 2. For would that you knew what great conflict I have for you, for them that are like the, uh, Laodicea, and for many that have not seen my face in the flesh. He says, man, he's worried that their hearts be, be, uh, might be comforted being knit together in love, and in the riches and full assurance and understanding and knowledge of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, uh, in whom is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Check this out. He, he's doing a warning. He's concerned for these people. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. So now he's dealing with, hey, I don't want you guys to get sidetracked. Man, these people are going to come to deceive you. How are they going to come to deceive you? For though I be absent in the flesh, yeah, I'm with you in the spirit. Join in beholding your order and your steadfastness of your faith in Amashiach. As you have therefore received Yeshua, uh, uh, Amashiach, Yeshua, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith, and ye have been taught, abounding therefore with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, Big Bang Theory, evolution, all that stuff, through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So when they see that, say, no, let no man judge you, I'm going to deal with the whole chapter and I'm going to prove that he's talking about the tradition of man. We're going to break this whole chapter. He says with philosophy, is the commandments of the Lord philosophy? Is the Sabbath a philosophy? Is the Sabbath a tradition of man? Is the holy day a trip or is that the commandments of God? Nah. It, so it says through philosophy... And vain deceit. So, so the Sabbath was vain deceit. Everyone that was keeping it in the Old Testament. After the tradition of man, that was a tradition of man. They just made that up. And the root of our, But let's keep going. Verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. 
of whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. We just talked about that, that he gave circumcision to Abraham and how it got transferred over to the new covenant. And it's still a perpetual covenant. Every person that wants to be in the body and be in the covenant of Yeshua Mashiach means that what? Be circumcised with the circumcision of the heart. So it never stops. It's a perpetual covenant. Let's keep going. Without hands uh, of the body of the sins of the flesh of the circumcision of Amashiach. Bear with him in baptism, wherefore you are risen in him through the faith of the operation of God and raise him from the dead. And being dead in your sins and uncircumcised of your flesh, have quickened together with him, uh, having forgiveness of all your trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which is contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Having spoiled all principalities and powers, he made, let's get into the juicy part now. He made, shew them openly and triumph, uh, triumphantly over them. Uh-oh, the, let no man judge you. And meet our drink, our respecter of holy days, our new moon, or the Sabbath day, which is a shadow of things that come, but the body is of our Christ. So in the beginning, he's talking about philosophy of man and vain deceit and tradition of man that's not of Christ. Then he says, don't let no man judge you. But let's see the next scripture. Let's see if he's talking about the law. Let no man beguile you and your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels and on those things which ye have not seen vainly puffed up and, and by his fleshly mind. When has God ever told us to worship angels? If he's talking about the law in this chapter is what they're saying. He's saying let no man judge you. See, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. The scripture right after says don't let no man get you to worship angels. When has God ever told us to worship angels? I'll prove that he condemned it in the Bible. So let's go save. Go ahead and bookmark Colossians chapter 2. We're going to come back to this. We're going to break it all down. Let's go with Colossians. Give me uh, 1 Kings. 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Chapter 2. Kings chapter 2. Verse 1. And I'm going to show you when it talks that he condemns worshiping the host of heaven. And we're going to deal in what's the host of heaven. Because some parts the host of heaven represents stars. And sometimes the host of heaven represents angels. So let's see, let's see, we see in Colossians it says, don't man be, be God, don't, don't voluntary worship an angel. And all you people with your statues of angels and this Michael Archangel picture and stuff, yeah, you fit in that Colossians, you condemn, you need to repent and get rid of that stuff. You a sinner. All those churches that have pictures of angels and all that foolishness, they're in error. So let's keep going. First Kings, chapter 22. We're going to start at uh, verse 11. 440. 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 11. You guys there? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Are they happy you guys are there? I'm going to start verse 11. And Zedekiah the son of Chaniah made him horns of iron and said, Thus said the Lord, These shall push the Syrians and thou shalt consume them. And the prophet said, So go up to Ramah Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into your, the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone out of Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophet declared unto thee, the king with one mouth, Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the words of the other that speak that which is good. So they came to one prophet. All the other prophets said that he's going to be blessed. You better say that he's going to be blessed too. Let's keep going. And Micah says, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord spake unto me, I will speak. So the king came, and, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Roman Gilead to battle, and shall we forbear? And he answered and said, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver thee into thy hand. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that is true in the name of the Lord? So he said, Hey, you want me to say what everyone else is going to say? Hey, go and prosper. And he says, How many times I got to deal with you? And he said, I, see, I saw all of Israel scattered upon the hills and the sheep. That have not a shepherd. And the Lord says, These have no master. Let them every man return to the house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehovah, Did not I tell thee that I would not, that he would not uh, prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, uh, And he said, Hear thou the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting in the throne, and the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Abraham that he may go and fall in Roman Gilead? And one said unto this matter, and another said unto that matter. And there came forth a spirit and said unto the Lord, Said, I shall will persuade him. And you need to finish the rest of that story. 
But this lets you know the host of heaven, when it talks about the host of heaven, he's dealing with the angels and with spirits. So let's go to Acts chapter 7. Because Colossians says, no, if he's talking about the law, they say, see, he's condemning us keeping the law in Colossians chapter 2. But I'm saying the very next verse after meet and drink or respect our holy days, it says, no, let no man get you to worship angels voluntarily. So let's keep going. Colossians chapter 2. I mean, uh, not Colossians, Acts chapter 7, and we're going back to Colossians chapter 2. I'm not going too fast for you, right? All right, cool. Acts 7. <laughs> and we're going to get uh, verse 40. Acts 7, and we're going to start at verse 40. You guys ready? i got to go quick. Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods that go before us, for as this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not become of him. And they made calf in the house in those days, and offered sacrifice unto idols, and rejoiced in the works of their hand. And God turned them, and then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as is written in the uh, books of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, ye have sacrificed slain beasts and sacrificed by the wilderness these forty years. So He's condemning God gave them up with a reprobate mind, and he says they started worshiping the host of heaven. If you read Zephaniah, thank you. If you read Zephaniah, the prophet came and condemned them for worshiping the host of heaven. So let's go back to Colossians chapter 2 and see if he's condemning the law. Well, what, 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 Colossians chapter 2. So we do understand the host of heaven dealing with the angels, and we see where God condemns them worshiping angels in the Bible, right? So we're all on the same page. 1284. Cool. Verse 18, you ready? Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. So if he's talking about the law, when has God ever told us to worship angels? He never did. So he's talking about things that don't pertain to the commandments of God in verse 18. Well, we're going to get to that. Let's keep going. Uh, which things they he have not seen, vainly puffed up and flesh in the minded, and, and not beholding the head from which all of the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Check this out. Wherefore, if the dead uh, with, uh, if we ye be dead in, uh, with a Mashiach from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world you are subject to ordinance? Taste not, touch not, handle not, which all are the perishing, perishing and using after the commandments and doctrine of men. Once again, who told us to worship angels? The Lord condemned that behavior. So he's saying that this whole chapter, Colossians chapter 2, he's dealing with after the traditions and the doctrines of men. We read in the earlier this chapter, after philosophies and tradition of man that's not after Christ, then he's dealing with the commandments and doctrine of man. What commandments and doctrine of man is he talking about? Let's go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. We're coming back to Colossians, by the way. Mark chapter 7. 1087. Mark chapter 7. I'm going to start at verse 1. You guys ready? Half of you guys there? Some of you guys there? Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came unto Jerusalem. And they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, and they find fault. Uh-oh! And the Pharisees and all the Jews except... They wash their hands. They eat not. Uh-oh. We just read, touch not, taste not, handle not in Colossians, right? We just read that. It says uh, uh, about the traditions and doctrine of man. Let's see what he's talking about. Let's keep going. Uh, they eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. So those are traditions of man and doctrine of man. Check this out. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and tables. And the Pharisees uh, asked him, why, you not, uh, why walk not in the uh, 
that thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands. And we'll get into that later. Let's go back to Colossians. Let's get back to Colossians. Because there were some people of, of Pharisees, there were some uh, Jews that didn't receive Yeshua or Mashiach, and they're trying to get people that believed in Yeshua or Mashiach to come back to uh, the Old Covenant and not to receive Christ, to go back to animal sacrifices, go back to the Leviticus priesthood. So he's saying these stuff is the commandments and tradition of man. The Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to start it off with verse, verse uh, 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why though living in the world you are subject to ordinances. So what ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. Oh, what, what is that? What is that? Which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrine of man. Do we see where that's coming from? It's not the commandments of God. It's the commandments and doctrine of man. They were doing this. They came. Hey, why do you eat with unwashing hands? It said we. No, there's many other stuff it said they did. They had their tradition of the elders. And they took that and gave it just as much credence as the commandments of God. So the Apostle Paul is coming and condemning these traditions of man. Okay. And, and so, but you're going to say, I know what you're saying in your sinful heart. Oh, you didn't deal with, you didn't deal with Colossians chapter 16. Don't worry, I was saving it for last. We're going to deal with Colossians chapter 16 right now. Now verse 16. Let no man beguile ye, therefore, to judge you in meat. I want to get with this meat. Or drink, or respecter of holy days, or new moon, or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come but the bodies of Christ. See, they try to say, let no man judge you. But what does verse 17 say? Which are a shadow of things to come but the bodies of Christ. It didn't say of a shadow of things that pass or a shadow of things that's done away with. It was a shadow of things to come. The, the light that was in the tabernacle was a shadow of Christ to be the light. The shoe bread, he was the bread of life. It was a shadow of things to come, and he came and fulfilled that. So now, after Christ died and rose again, he's saying these Sabbaths are a shadow of things to come. So now me, the holiness instructor, have to show you a scripture of these meat or drink or respect or holy days that have not came to pass yet. So if I could show you right here when it says it's a shadow of things to come, referring to it hasn't came to pass yet, if I could show you a scripture to prove that it hasn't came to pass yet, then that means you need to start keeping the Sabbath. Isaiah 66. I already know. I already know they're going to say you haven't dealt with 16. We're going to deal with 16 right now. Because these people are with you. Isaiah 66. I'm going to deal with the me, and I'm going to deal with the Sabbath and the new moons. 819. Because, hey, it said it was a shadow of things to come, right? That means it hasn't came to pass yet. So no man can judge you. No man can condemn you. Don't let no man condemn you because they try to condemn you and they still celebrate in Christmas. Right. Oh, you you false. Oh, oh, you're legalistic. But you celebrate Christmas. On, I'm celebrating something that's in the Bible. That's right. Oh, I'm, I'm sinning because I'm obeying more of the Bible than you. I'm, I'm wrong because I'm obeying more of the Bible. Mine is a shadow of things to come. I'll show you that these new moons and, and certain meats and all this stuff isn't done away with. Come Isaiah 66. We're going to start at verse, and this is the last scripture. I'm ready to eat. This is the last scripture. Uh, we're going to start at verse 15. None of this came to pass yet. Let's see. Because uh, in the scripture, we won't deal with uh, end time judgment. But he says he destroyed it with water this time. He'll destroy it with fire. There's other scriptures to support that in Revelation and other prophets to support that. Let's keep going. Verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, he's talking about judgment, and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Where do we find that at? We find that in the book of Revelation. Let's keep going. So he's talking about judgment right now. The whole world. Let's keep going. And will render his anger with fury and he rebuke with flames of fire. When is that going to happen? When has that happened? That hasn't happened yet. So this is because remember Colossians says, which is several things to come. Let's keep going. Um, uh, five, uh, verse 16. For by fire and by the sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. This is when he passes judgment. They shall they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens be by one tree in the midst. What are they doing? They sinning? 
eating swine's flesh, an abomination. So it's still an abomination in this stuff that hasn't came to pass. And the mouse shall be consumed together, said the Lord. So when he passed judgment, there's going to be people that say they're serving the Lord and they really still eating unclean meats. Yeah, he's going to pass judgment on you too. Let's keep going. All right. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. When has that happened? That hasn't happened yet. And, and I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape from them unto the nations, to Tarsus, to Pool, to Lud, to draw the bow, to Tubal, and to Jevan, and the isles afar off. You have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. These are the Gentiles. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord, and all, out of all the nations upon the uh, upon horses and chariots and leaders and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain in Jerusalem said the Lord and the children of Israel shall bring an offering and a clean vessel in the house of the Lord and I will take of them for priests and for Levites for as the new heavens and the new earth which I make shall remain before me said the Lord so shall their seed and name remain and it shall come to pass for one new moon and from, uh, from another, one Sabbath from another, shall all flesh come and worship before me, said the Lord. And they shall go, from, uh, go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For the worm shall not die, neither shall the fire be quenched. They shall all be a horn of all flesh. So he's dealing with judgment. He's, he's going to judge all these people. He's going to bring Israel back into their nation. And he's going to, uh, we're going to be a light to the Gentiles. And he's going to crush these people that's eating unclean meats. So then when we read, oh, we're running out of time. When we read in Colossians, it says, let no man judge you in meat or drink. How, how is he saying that's done away with if he's going to pass judgment on these people still eating swine's flesh? New moons are a Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come. How is it a shadow of things to come? Because Isaiah is saying, hey, in this new heaven, new earth, we're going to be keeping the Sabbath. New, are we in new heaven, new earth yet? No, we're not. So you need to still be keeping the Sabbath. That makes no sense. This is why it says don't let no, I don't let no man judge me. You can't condemn me for because I eat clean and I keep, uh, keep the Sabbath and the holy days. It says this is a shadow of things to come. He's going to fulfill that. He hasn't even fulfilled all the feast days. It show me Bible when he fulfilled blowing the trumpets and feast of tabernacles, feast of end gathering. He hasn't. And I'll deal with that when we, on the feast days. Now that it's been and done, we got two more studies. Um, don't worry, I'm going to crush all your little, oh, if one man esteems one day above another, no, we'll deal with that. Oh, if you got the Lord, you got the Sabbath, I am the Lord. All those scriptures we're going to crush that you're going to try to uh, try to escape and say you can get out of keeping the Sabbath. We're going to crush that, and I'm going to prove how the Sabbath still stands. In the next Bible study, we're going to show you how to keep the Sabbath. Right. Glad it's done. Keep standing. Don't drop standard. Shalom. Give the Lord a hand clap.